Hi and good day. I hope you are doing well. In today's video, we are going to discuss about fugitive emission for valves. This is a topic that is gaining quite a popularity considering the current scenario of plants handling toxic, flammable and carcinogenic chemicals and the pressure from various environmental protection bodies to assure that the fugitive emission is not being released into the environment. In this video, we are going to discuss about the history of fugitive emission, the Clean Air Act, applicable standards for fugitive emissions and our company Framework Engineering support that we can provide in this area for designing as well as compliances with the requirement of the standard by doing the testing on the valve. The history of fugitive emission can be traced back to the earlier 1900s with the first successful court case in the United States against a blacksmith for order and smoke in 1859. The concepts of fugitive emissions which refers to unintended leaks of gas or vapor from pressurized industrial equipment gained more attention in the 1960s and 70s with the establishment of the US Environmental Protection Agency that is EPA and the Clean Air Act. Interesting to know that industrial valves are a major source of emission. We will see in our video what a valve manufacturer does to assure that the emissions are within the acceptable range suggested by the standard and the end user. At the end of the day, the end user is responsible for assuring the health, safety and environmental issues that are arises within a plant. And with emissions, the end product may be different. Energy is lost. It means the end user in any cases lose money if it is not able to comply with the requirement. In chemical plants, the valves are responsible for around 60% of fugitive emissions, making them the most significant source of emission. However, generally only 1 or 2% of valves in any facility that are actually leaking. But the amount of emission that comes from a small percentage of valves can range from a few pounds or up to a ton of emissions. The major cause of valve leakages are the aging, damaging and improper installation or maintenance. Seals or gasket failures due to normal wear or improper maintenance is a major cause of these valve emissions. Also, the valve sizing is critical in any system because it determines not only the amount of flow flowing through the valve but the volume of the flow. If the valve is not been sized properly, it may fail to completely close and connect seamlessly with the other system components, resulting in leaks. And within the valves itself, the linear globe valve represents around 70% of the total leak. Linear valves are more prone to valve emissions compared to the rotary valves. Typical reasons for the leak, scratches, bends, corrosions, erosions, these are the four major typical reasons for leaks. The next topic is Clean Air Act. The primary goal of the Clean Air Act includes setting and enforcing national ambient air quality standards NAAQS for pollutant deemed harmful to human health and the environment such as particular matter, ozone, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides and lead. Regulating emissions from mobile sources such as automobile, trucks, buses and airplane through the establishment of emission standards and requirement for emission control technology. Third is regulating emissions from stationary sources such as power plant, refinery and other industrial facility through permits, emission standards and pollution control measures. Also addressing acid rain, ozone duplications and other air pollution issues through regulatory programs and international agreements. And the last is providing fund and support for air quality monitoring, research and technology development to improve the understanding of air pollutions and developing effective control strategy. So these are the roles of Clean Air Act. The Clean Air Act or CAA established EPA Title 40 Part 60 and 63 to regulate air pollutants for industry and source of air emissions which are applicable in our cases so let me give you a little brief of title 40 part 60 and title 40 part 63 part 60 of this title 40 is often referred to the new source performance standards nsps 
it established federal emission standards for new modified and reconstructed source of air pollutants in the us it contains standards for specific category of stationary sources including power plants petroleum uh, refineries uh, chemical manufacturing facilities and other industrial operations the nsps state emissions limits and compliance requirement for various pollutants such as sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxide volatile organic compounds and greenhouse gases it is designed to assure that new and modified source of air pollution using the best available control technology and practices to minimize emissions and protect air quality the second part is part 63 it is known as national emission standards for hazardous air pollutions okay this part establish maximum achievable control technology standards for emissions of hazardous air pollutants from specific source category hazards are pollutants known as susceptible to cause cancers or other very serious health effect examples could be say benzene formaldehyde mercury lead etc this applies these standards applies to both new and existing source of hazardous emissions in industries such as chemical refinery pharmaceutical and others this part requires affected source to use the most effective control technology and practices available to reduce emissions to the level that are considered achievable and to follow both part 60 and 63 they have defined a standard for measurement that is uh, the EPA method 21 this which is also known as leak detections and repairs it's a standard method developed by the USA for detecting repairing fugitive emissions of volatile organic compounds from equipments and components within industrial facility fugitive emissions are in turn release of gases or vapor from valves flanges connectors pumps and other equipments in industries such as chemical manufacturing petroleum and oil and gas production these emissions can contribute to air pollution and have adverse effect on human health and environment so epa method 21 is a method in which a portable organic vapor analyzer is used and is capable to detect and quantify voc in the ambient air a proper sampling plant and its location is decided for measurement once the data is collected its interpreted repairing of the equipment is done to minimize all the fugitive emissions the reports and records are maintained for all future references the acceptable criteria that is defined by the caa in this case is either 100 ppm or 500 ppm depending upon different states within the united states of america similarly ta loof which means technical instructions of air quality control which was introduced by germany in the year 1986 and there were several updates up to 2002 so the latest version is 2002 there is a test done by a different standard that is vdi 2440 where acceptable leakage rates are 10 raised to minus 4 millibar liter per meter per second for temperature below 250 and 10 raised to minus 2 millibar liter per meter per second for temperature above 250 degrees centigrade however there is no test method specified no thermal or mechanical cycle required or no performance classes defined in this particular testing okay so this uh, talu standard is does is not been able to define the requirement of emissions properly that is why the latest revision of taluf is aligned with iso 15848-1 and specify the test method mechanical and thermal cycle and tightness class there are two tightness class lba or lc next we can talk about iso 15848-1 and 2 while part 1 is for type testing and part 2 is for production testing in all this test Was all possible leakage path are being measured for leakages first let us discuss about part 1 the standard defines the requirement for fugitive emission as shown in the table let me explain testing media can be used either helium or methane 
there are three different tightness class defined such as a b and c a refers to a leakage class of 10 raised to minus 6 milligram per second per meter b refers to leakage between 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 raised to minus 4 c refers to a leakage between 10 raised to minus 4 to 10 raised to minus uh, 2 here one thing which I want to make highlight is the unit of measurement and the unit that has been defined by the standards are two different things. Hence one has to take care when you are reporting the value in the report itself. Then it is valve type that is on off valve or control valve. Then there is number of cycles to be done based on the valve type. If it is an on off valve then the number of the cycles are 500, 1000 and 2500 if it is control valve then the number of cycle is 20,000 60,000 and 100,000 next is SSA that is stem seal adjustment and then the temperature class that is up to which temperature you need to qualify as you can see in an example a marking is done to indicate the complete detail of the FE testing here BH means tightness class of B with helium as testing media CO3 means it's an on off valve with number of cycles as 2500. SSA1 means one number of adjustment done during the testing. And T 200 degree centigrade means the temperature class that is 200 degree centigrade uh, testing has been done, followed by the rating and the applicable standard. However, in the production testing, that is ISO 15848 2, one valve per valve type pressure class and size is considered for testing sniffing test is used as per the annexure b of the standard A test pressure is around 6 bar and the leakage is expressed in ppm the valve is cycled five times and then half open to do the testing if testing fails then the whole batch is rejected here tightness of a means 50 ppm v b means between 50 and 100 and c means between 100 and 1000 for the stem seal for the body seal it must be less than 50 ppm for all the glasses the next is shell MESC 77 slash 312 this standard is almost similar to ISO 15848-2 only the testing lot of the valve is changed it is around 2 to 5 percent considering the fugitive emission class and stem dia and acceptance criteria is provided by the standard based on the stem dia in, in the table C.1 in the standard itself for example for stem dia of 20 mm the leakage rate will be 3.56 into 10 to minus 6 millibar liter per second for tightness class A and 3.56 into 10 to minus 5 millibar liter per second for tightness class B. For the on-off valve, only 5 cycles to be done and for the control valve, we have to do around 500 cycles. The next one is API 622 and API 624. API 622 is referring to only for packing qualification. The test media here is methane and the testing is done in a special fixture that has been designed. So it is not been done in a valve. 1510 number of cycles is done. Three thermal cycles of at temperature 260 degrees is done and acceptable leakage of 500 ppm with no packing adjustment. That is for API 622. Why? API 624, it is for linear valve design qualification only or you can say rising stem equipped with graphite packing it was developed in 2006 and published in 2014 here the testing media again it's methane testing done on the valve not on any fixture here the number of cycle is 310 three thermal cycle at 260 degree centigrade and acceptance criteria of 100 ppm only as you can see the comparison between these standards ISO 15848-1 is the most stringent standard and if we are complying to this standard then it will be easy for us to comply to other standards. Our support to you is as listed both for the design, manufacturing and for testing and validation of the valve. We can support a full cycle from design to manufacture to testing of the valve itself. Yes, you can see on the screen the design we can do bellow seal valve, API 600 or API 60 ball valves. Okay. We also have vendors available with us at different facility within India where the testing can be done. So this brings to the end of our video. Thank you for watching. Contact details are available on the screen.